Okay, so we'll uh, spend the rest of the time discussing how do we push the good enough scheme to second order. So the good enough scheme, as we have seen, when there is a shock wave, is equivalent of upwinding. And when you perform a Taylor series analysis for upwinding scheme, you can see that the accuracy, which only makes sense for smooth region of the solution, right? I mean, when you have a shock wave, uh, out of accuracy, you can't do Taylor series analysis anymore. But for smooth region of the solution, you can see that the solution, the reconstruction is only first order. So how can we use good enough scheme and uh, that would produce a non-oscillatory solution near shock waves, but also second order? So the way is to not modify the good enough scheme at all. But instead modify how we look at the function, how we treat the function to be only from its volume averages. We have been treating a function as if it is a piecewise constant function. If I have a function like this and I have the volumes like that, I have been treating the function as if it's a constant over here, another constant over here, another constant over here, another constant over here. But in practice, we don't have to. Right? Nobody tells you that the fact that you only know the volume averages means you have to treat the function as piecewise constant. Instead, we can treat the function, for example, as piecewise linear. I can treat the solution here by still maintaining the same volume average, but I can try to estimate the slope right, from the nearby volumes. For example, I can construct this to be piecewise linear with a positive slope, while this positive slope is consistent with the slope over here. Okay, I can, I can also construct a slope from here to here and uh, draw a parallel line over here. I can draw another parallel line over here and basically I can construct each volume to be a piecewise, uh, to be a linear function. So this linear function, I want to make sure the volume average of the linear function is actually the same as the volume average I store in the computer. But I have a lot of freedom trying to estimate the slope of this linear function. Okay, so for example, I can estimate the slope from just the two nearby cells. Or I can estimate the slope from only one side. Okay, so but whatever I do, the, I can um, manipulate the Taylor series in computing the slope such that I get a second order accurate solution here and also here. They don't have to agree, right? The, the value at the left cell at the boundary may be completely different from the value I reconstruct from the right cell. But as long as both are second order, then I would get a second order scheme, right? For example, you can show that yourself uh, that a second order reconstruction may be the following. So I have ui, ui minus one, ui plus one. I can compute the slope at i. So this is the slope uh, reconstruction is equal to ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 divided by 2 delta x if I have a uniform grid. If I don't have a uniform grid, you, you need to tweak that a little bit. And then I can reconstruct the solution at ui plus half minus. So this is an interesting point because the solution at ui plus half is no longer a single value. It has a value on the left hand side, you have a value on the right hand side. The value on the left hand side is from the reconstruction of the cell on the left. It's going to be equal to ui 
plus half of delta x times si. All right. Correspondingly, you have si plus 1 can be equal to ui plus 2 minus ui over 2 delta x. And uh, the same interface value at the right can be ui plus 1 minus delta x over 2 times si plus 1. So you reconstruct the solution at both on the left and on the right using an estimated slope. And you can show that both the ui plus half minus and plus would be a second order approximation of the value of the function. Okay. It's just a Taylor series analysis. It takes some time to do, but like uh, uh, I'm sure at this point you can do it. Okay. Uh, now we have these two values. My flux at i plus half. So instead of it's just a, a good enough scheme using ui and ui plus 1, I can have it using ui plus half minus and ui plus half plus, where the good enough scheme of ul and ur is exactly the same as the previous case. It's either max of f or mean of f, depending on different cases. It's the same good enough flux function except for the arguments, the inputs are different. Okay. So what the, the kind of good enough scheme we have been looking at is actually a special case of this scheme. It's a special case just by setting all these s's to zero. Right? So if I set si and si plus 1 to be 0, then ui plus half minus would be exactly ui. So here would be exactly ui. If this is 0, then ui plus half plus is exactly ui plus 1. So this is going to be exactly ui plus 1. So this is basically a generalization of what we have been using earlier this class. Right? Except for by properly construct these SIs as opposed to setting them zero, we can get second order accuracy. All right. But uh, this is a great idea and people tried it and it works for a lot of cases, but still it produces some oscillations, not as much as what we would expect uh, for the central Average, but like not much, uh, uh, not much less either. 